Fatah. The road is arduous, over 250 kilometers between Kananga and Chikapa. The flight of people along this road was sparked by violence between the government and supporters of a tribal chief. Amid poverty and corruption, different ethnic groups were drawn into fighting each other. Violence prevented planting, so food disappeared, and when the survivors came home, they were destitute. These are some of the people you're going to meet. Children make up the majority of those who fled. We met two-year-old Kalandi and her mother in Kenda in an MSF clinic. Kalandi is malnourished and has malaria. We walked for three months to get here. When I saw my daughter sick, my heart was full of sadness. Further up the road, we met Kapinga, age 12, looking after her brothers and sisters while her mother foraged for food. We were sleeping when the militia came to our home. They said, who are all these people sleeping here? We can kill all the men who are here. Papa was eating some corn. He was told to spit everything he had in the mouth. Papa left and never came back. There is calm now, but fear that conflict can easily erupt again. This means a mother with a dying daughter can feel no peace. We still have no safety, because when we go to the bushes, we get killed. All our houses are burnt down. We have no shelter, not even a mattress to sleep on. Everything has been destroyed. I don't have enough money to get my daughter to the hospital. I'm taking her home to die now. There is an aid effort along the road, but agencies can only give half rations because of a drastic lack of funding from international donors. We saw people begging for food. Now, as you come around this group, past the mounds of food, there is a very difficult realisation, and that is that everybody here who has a token entitling them to rations We'll only get half of what they expected because there just isn't enough food. And as we walk over here, you'll see the faces of people who will leave here without any food at all. And they'll have to go back because they were hiding in the bush or maybe they were looking for food when the registration took place. There is no food here for them. And they're understandably impatient and upset and realize that they have to wait and go hungry. 
Is it fair to say that you are being asked to play God, to decide who gets food, who doesn't, perhaps who lives and who dies? Uh, yes, I think it's a good point, and, uh, and we're, not, we're not ready to play that role. I mean. Some families have spent months on the road. We met David and Marie and their three children who'd walked 300 kilometers. We went to the main road to look for food, but there was nothing, only dead bodies. As we walked, the feet of the children started to swell, and my wife got tuberculosis. Her breasts started to vanish. We can only walk as fast as my son. His feet are so swollen, he can't walk normally. When she coughs, she coughs up blood. Tomorrow, we will start walking again. We arrived at a government hospital in Chikapa, just as three-year-old Ishutsi Mbombo had died. Fever, his mother Zembe explains. He died of fever. He died just now. This is Kasai, where children are dying from preventable diseases, their bodies weakened by malnutrition. And all of this is avoidable. Such suffering isn't the natural condition of these people, it's man-made, and that is the tragedy of Congo. A distraught mother waits for news of her sick child. And a lullaby, as tiny lungs fight to survive. Just some lives out of so many here, hanging in the balance. Fergal Keane, BBC News, Kasai.